wait another minute or so for some people to log in. Yeah. Thanks. We're going to get started uh, again to our fourth ITJD NEG webinar. This one is going to be pretty short and sweet. Um, our building actually lost power, so we're actually conducting this webinar from our respective homes. So hopefully we won't have any technical issues or anything difficult like that. That said, I'd like to thank everyone for tagging along. Um, since this is our fourth webinar that we've done, we're going to skip most of the intro to ourselves and the CompTIA. If you missed previous webinars and you want to know more about Nicola Rai or CompTIA and DCAO's partnership or the DNEG project in general, you can reach out to us anytime or view the webinar, at the archived webinars on IllinoisWorkNet. That is www.illinoisworknet.com. Job driven NEG. Be able to download this PowerPoint as well on there. We're going to have that link on here a couple more times as well, just to hammer it home. So, and we'll also email it out to everyone as soon as possible. Likewise, we have our chat box open here. So, if you have any questions, please type away. And you need to remember to send your questions to everybody on the little drum box that they have there. Give here my screen here so we can get started with the PowerPoint. Of workforce centers have told us that they've been struggling to get enough people in the doors for this IT program. So and I have been going, we're going back and forth with some LWIAs, some subcontractors, and with DCEO and DOL to get some good ideas on uh, durables and how you guys can get some sort of, you know, how you guys can combat this issue and get some people in the door. having a difficult time get people to come in one of the most effective things to do is to team up with IDS to send out an email blast um, go out to everybody who's currently receiving unemployment or efficiently exhausted their benefits you can create a message to send out to all these people in order to kick up traffic to your workforce center I kind of have to tread lightly here because every IDS office probably has different rules and regulations for sending out these blasts. So I don't want to speak in blanket statements and give you guys any false information. Really, the thing that I want to impress upon you is that IDS email blasts normally work very well in getting people in the door. And if it's something you're interested in, you should consult with your local IDS representative to get all of the finer details. What is this? Uh, the email blasts have to be for an event. What that is is that you can't send out emails to everyone receiving unemployment benefits that just says, you know, something like, come to our office if you're interested in IT training. Create and schedule some TJD, NEG event or orientation or something. That's a good idea. So, you know, we've done this before and it's been really 
productive thing for them to do for two reasons, really. One, it gets people in the door, right? So that solves that problem. And two, it's a great way to screen for good candidates. So, for example, maybe email blast will have a call to action like, um, you know, send your resume to this email address to be considered for this orientation or something like that. Inner is only looking for experienced IT candidates. You can screen their resumes that way and then schedule the people with good resumes to come in for that orientation. Maybe people don't show up for the orientation, so now they probably won't do well in an internship or a work learning environment, right? Because they show up for the orientation. Next, there are a lot of general rules and best practices for sending email blasts out to customers. So I'd like to go through just a quick list of those. IDES is going to have their own set of rules, so you know their rules are going to supersede any of these marketing guidelines. Should there be any conflict between the two, then here are a few very basic guidelines to follow when constructing that blast email. If we're talking about email blasts here. Don't use phrases like "email blast" in the subject or content of the email. People see phrases like that and. They're conditioned to immediately assume the message is unimportant, so they disregard it, right? People out there, the buzzword for this is to send it to the right segment or to use segmentation. Two different ways we envision you guys using this. So Workforce Center is only interested in experienced IT people for this grant possibility that you can target that segment through IDES when you're sending out the blast. What works is uh, people have to fill out SIP codes and SICK codes in order to receive unemployment benefits. You might be able to work with IDES to target that specific population. Everyone is targeting experienced IT professionals, right? So the second way to target the right people is with your wording. If you're blast to everyone, you'll have to word your message so that you capture the right people's attention and kind of deter the wrong people's attention, right? Someone who's only interested in forklifting jobs has no interest in being in IT. They should be responding to your email blast. So a of correct segmentation targeting would be something like, like right in your subject line, do you have IT experience? Or if you're taking entry-level IT clients, maybe something like, are looking for IT experience or something like that. Hopefully that kind of wording will deter any, you know, forklift operators or anyone who's totally not interested in IT from responding to your blast email. Email, we came up with as a sort of a bad example of what not to do. The first problem here is in the subject line. You want to put in your subject words like guarantee, words like money, words like free. Those are going to make email filters think you're sending spam messages. So you won't even see the message at all. If you use all capitals or if you use too many exclamation points, that will also raise red flags with spam filters as well. But keep in mind that you don't want to be bland or boring in the subject line either because people aren't going to read that. The balancing act that you need to play in order to get subject line perfect. Of words not to use in blast emails, words that will, uh, you know, trip up spam filters, and we've included a link to one of those at the bottom of the page here, just as an example. Should pop in a second. Keep of the recipient in mind, in that message focused message, you know, inval or not valuable for the recipient. That sounds really obvious, but it's actually it's it's said than done. There are higher bachelor's degree programs that are dedicated to this marketing concept, right? So what it boils down to is your email shouldn't be too long, it shouldn't be bloated, and it include just the right amount of information that's pertinent to the job seeker. Tell them their end goal is, how to take the next step, and any you know necessary requirements that they need to know about. That seems really obvious, but spelling really matters in these types of blast emails. Just like we give to our job seekers, if your email blast has just one spelling mistake, a lot of recipients will immediately disregard the email as spam, or they take your message seriously, right? 
make, make sure you proofread again, and then make sure somebody else comes in to proofread before you send out the blast. Right. That uh, I found interesting about this is that, that one is that they teach in dinner computer classes, you know, in community colleges, but just all around high schools, things like that, is not to trust an email with spelling errors. So a lot of spam filters are starting to factor that in. If your if your email has way too many spelling errors, it might even trip up a spam filter just because of that. You want to measure your results as best as you can. I believe you should be able to see how many people opened your email and how many clicked through to your website or wherever you wanted them to click. You'll be able to tell what works and what doesn't when you send out other email blasts in the future. DES to see how much of these metrics are possible. Sometimes it's not possible to get this kind of information, but you got to do the best you can. If you blast to say a thousand people for your event, count how many actually show up. At the very least, this will give you a, a very basic idea of what to expect for next time. Some of you might not want to even use IDES to do an email blast. So some locations have their own email lists and they send out newsletters and such through Constant Contact or other similar software. If that's the case, you'll want to keep an eye on your analytics to see who's viewing and who's clicking through on your emails. For you, it's probably going to be pretty easy, especially if you use something like Constant Contact. Send the best. Well, the general rule for this is you're holding a particular event, which you have to do for IDES in order to send out these blasts. Send out the email at least five business days in advance. That gives people enough time to check the email and, and make plans and everything. And I say general because this depends on a myriad of different factors. But the highest email open rates are from emails that are sent just after lunchtime until about 4 p.m. or so. Between 8 and 9 have the lowest rates since people tend to be kind of you know, deleting anything that seems unimportant when they first check their email that, that day. Say emails don't do well in comparison to the middays of the week. Or kind of cleaning out their inbox of seemingly unimportant email on Monday mornings, right? So you don't want to send your email blast to be disregarded for things like that. Yeah. They're working on the weekends, but and emails also have a very low open rate, and so I would and send it then either. Friday are also normally bad for that same reason. So should you send it? Midweek emails are ideal, so sending a blast out on, say, you know, a Wednesday at 1 p.m. would be a good idea. The thing about um, IDES blasts is that there's also a possible option of doing it by phone. You can request a message and send it to all the phone numbers of people receiving UI benefits in your area. Email tends to be more convenient for people you know, so they don't have to listen to the same message over and over to write down all the information that they need, right? But you might want to experiment with phone blasts if the email option doesn't produce results. Section of this webinar, which is going to be about the marketing flyers we've created for you guys to use in getting more clients in the door. In December, one of the meeting downtown with the Elwias about this whole project. Some of you were probably there. One thing that the LBAs and subcontractors wanted from us more than anything was some marketing materials to go out to potential clients and employers. So I mentioned that there's been a difficulty getting both clients in the door as well as getting employers on board with internships and work based learning and things like that. Yeah. The business services people for locations that we've talked to have mentioned that both potential clients and companies either you know, they take them seriously or they treat the program like it's some sort of, you know, maybe charity for people with no real skills. The big question that we've heard from business services reps is to distribute these types of marketing flyers that feature CompTIA's name, since because, you know, a globally recognized industry presence, right? And one phrase that was used by one of the business services reps uh, was that can maybe lend some legitimacy to the JDNEG program, and I think that's a good way to put it. In mind, um, our marketing team, in conjunction with DCEO and with some input from the Department of Labor, created flyers for your centers to use. I'm going to go through and I'll show you the PDFs and the Word documents in just a second. 
second, but I wanted to put this slide up here just so you can see what they look like. The first batch of flyers that we created were made specifically for clients because they're pretty early on in the JDNEG grant, right? So we, a lot of you say that you're having issues getting people in the doors. We wanted to do the flyers for clients first. There are things that you'll need to edit that are going to be unique for your center, and I'll go through those, but mostly they're pretty universal for everyone. You can on the Illinois WorkNet ITJDNEG website, and it's www.illinoisworknet.com slash job driven NEG. They're not up there quite yet, but they're gonna, we're going to upload them uh, as soon as this webinar is over. Where to go? You should consider putting them at the front desk of your center. That's obviously a good spot. Um, I'd also consider sharing them with local libraries, um, train providers that you use frequently, community stamp centers, hospitals, anywhere where someone might go if they're looking for work. I'd also be sure to share them on your social media pages. So of getting some versions of these flyers that are optimized for social media platforms. So reach out to us if that's something that you're interested in. As we got those, we're going to load those up to the, the Illinois WorkNet website as well. Flyers up in two different categories, as you can see here. These are, you know, flyers for attracting IT clients who don't have any experience in IT at all. And then there are flyers for IT clients who have been in the field for a while on the left. Really, difference between the two is the job title suggestions. So we have job title suggestions kind of sprinkled throughout the flyers, and that's really the biggest difference between the two categories. For an entry-level client, we list titles like you know help desk, customer support, things like that. And for more experienced people, we list things like network engineer. There's also some you know subtle learning differences between the two categories as well. Well, now is switch over to the actual PDF file, which looks something like this. Not difficult to see on my screen since I'm doing a screen share, but I wanted you to be able to see the full flyer on my screen here. See, they're pretty straightforward flyers for you know an experienced IT person. We have this kind of eyes up at the top about 100,000 plus IT job openings in Illinois, and a list of typical roles down here for an experienced IT professional. We need to edit on the flyer are down at the bottom. Center's address, there's a logo for the county. The default that we have here is just Cook County's logo. And we also have a place for QR codes on the right. DO like the idea of having a spot for QR codes on here. So if your center's website has one, you can put it there. Really quickly here, so you guys can see what the other flyers look like. This is the one for I, for experienced IT, and this is the second one. It's the front and back flyer that we have here. The flyer for what we're calling newbies, right? People who are new to IT, and then the second flyer for newbies is a front and back flyer as well. Flyer by opening up the Word document. So I'll show you how to do that. You have an open Word, and it should look something like this. Documents look a little washed out and faded at first, but once you convert them to a PDF, it's going to look fine. You can see editable places the document aren't washed out down at the bottom. So that's the QR code, the county logo aren't fed, which means that they can be changed. Right? It is changeable, I should note. If you have a QR code, I'd suggest taking the QR code box out like this. And then make it turn in the middle because uh, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye, I think, that way. I think centers probably don't have these QR codes set up right now. They might want to set these flyers up this way before they get that QR code all set up. Leave it as a PDF for anybody who doesn't know. You just go up to File. You go to this, you know, where you want to save it. So I'll just save it to Webinars here. And then down here it says Save as Type. Just click and click the PDF button and then save it that way. It's pretty simple. Flyers that are optimized for Mac as well. I don't know if a lot of you guys are using Macs at your workforce centers, but if you do, we have flyers that are optimized for Mac 
as well. Uh, pretty basic, it's pretty easy to navigate. The only other thing that I'll mention about the flyers is um, if you had success with truffles or postcards or anything different than these types of flyers, let us know. We might be able to reformat these materials and email those new templates to you. I also reiterate that we'll be creating flyers like this specifically to, to um, attract employers. So any input, suggestions, questions, comments, et cetera, about be on a flyer for employers to try and get them to sign up for work-based learning opportunities and things like that. Please let us know. I'm going to put the ball over to Nicole here so she can talk about using social media to attract clients to get them in the door. Let me second here. Hello, everybody. I'm going to flip through these slides really quickly to get to my section. Um, so thank you again for joining us, and thank you, Jeff, for that information on IDES and our marketing materials. Um, another part that we wanted to talk to you about today is our social media reach. Um, we've solicited, solicited the advice of our marketing team to find out best practices and pointers to share with our group regarding their social media efforts. Jeff and I are not social media experts, so the information being given is merely suggestions based on the information from our marketing team and online research that we've done. Um, our marketing team has graciously given us the approval to share his email address for any follow-up questions regarding adding value to your social media marketing efforts. We will provide his contact information at the end of this presentation goal, though, is to highlight some key functions that create positive outcomes across three well-known platforms. Though I mentioned that it's less recognized on the business side of social media marketing due to the algorithms Facebook has put in place that can slow the posting of content down. And suggested that if this is your main social media marketing tool used to notify customers about upcoming events, be sure to post early and consider doing a reminder post too in order to capture the biggest audience. LinkedIn is a social media platform recruit oriented and tends to market to business professionals. Because of this, it is a great tool to highlight your workforce center and provide information that would engage your followers by showcasing what you have to offer them. Since LinkedIn is business-driven, it captures an employment-related audience rather than Facebook, which is geared more towards keeping in touch on everyday happenings between friends and family. Twitter is a social media tool that allows sharing of short and hashtags in order to engage those specific audiences. People or businesses who share similar interests can obtain notifications regarding your workforce. Twitter hand get into little nuances from each section, each of these three social media sites um, as we go along. By saying that no matter what social media platform you use, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, it's very important to have an appropriate picture, information about your workforce center, and a website address that sends followers to your direct site properly placed into the profile of each social media site. The purpose of doing this is to drive people to your personal website, which will then allow them to review content and share if they like what they see. This will help in creating followers or your community and make sure that your brand is well known to those who would benefit from it. Make sure you keep this information updated as changes occur within your center. This slide shows the home page for our Creating IT Futures Foundation. As you can see, the picture they chose to use was a graphic designed for our foundation. They've also incorporated pictures that involve IT images, which they have placed across the top, list a brief description about the foundation, and provided a website to learn more. And you can see that the same profile images were used and the same type of description. 
in the description to draw followers of CompTIA to their page too by using the at symbol to incorporate CompTIA into their description. There are those who are looking for CompTIA to see information about the foundation as well. We'll talk more about properly tagging shortly. The advice that our marketing team stressed was that using social media was more about listening than posting. It's about following people back and connecting with those followers. You have you can have 4,000 followers, but if you don't communicate with them, there will be no benefit for either side, and that could result in losing those followers. The easiest way to spread your name is to communicate through posts where your center could add value by commenting. A way to join that conversation could be as simple as liking the post, asking a question about it, sharing it with your followers, or tagging a person or business you think it is also to respond to both negative and positive posts on your social media sites. Most people find it easy to reply to a positive post, but shy away or reply with negative tones to a negative comment. A reply as simple as, we've seen your post and we'll be discussing this with management, will show your followers that you genu genuinely care about how your center is impacting them. You can see how our marketing team is sharing articles on Twitter that they feel will provide good information to our followers. These specific errors have proven to be valuable to our following based on the number of retweets they have received. It also shows that the second article listed here are favorites marked by our followers. And you can see on the top post from Huffington Post, we had 11 retweets for that one. And on the lower post from MindShift, there were 114. Facebook, and LinkedIn as well. You can share the same articles on every social media site you use. However, provide better engagement with your followers. Your Workforce Center's Facebook or LinkedIn page and Twitter feed should be relevant to your audience, who may tend to be local area job seekers and others who serve a similar population. In your posts, you are trying to send a positive message about your Workforce Center. So not only are you sharing relevant content like we discussed above, but be sure to involved in that will benefit them. Often politics, workplace pretty pictures, and the like should be kept to personal pages and feeds. Keep in mind that you are relating an image or brand for your workforce center to your target audience and their followers as well. Before you tag your workforce center, think about the type of image you will be portraying to those posts. Even if you don't tag your workforce center, making any mention of your workplace in a post that may have a negative content could result in a negative reaction to your workforce center, even when not intended. Especially since the more social media you use, the more easily searchable your Workforce Center is on Google through keywords thanks to hashtags, which make any word searchable in all three platforms. Due to ability for things to spread like wildfire through social media, a native image could be a banner. This all brings to mind the lesson that once an item is posted, the decisions about content could prevent negative outcomes in the future. This is especially true if you are currently or hoping to work with a partner, for example, IBM, who is working to help keep their image positive and may not want to associate their name with your workforce center if your social media presence is a negative one. Those, if you are teaming up with your, your who you are teaming up with on your post to ensure your brand is being associated with positive ones. It's also important to make sure that you are posting to the right side. Right. For example, of a big mistake made on social media, do a Google search for Chrysler social media mistake and read about the employee who got fired for posting on the company's social media page instead of his personal one. Tagging. Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter all allow you to use the at symbol in order to tag a person or business to your post. Making sure you tag the proper person or business is important, so review the suggested names that automatically select as you start to type in your target 
to their right Twitter handle or profile name before you finalize your tag. Note on this slide that on the Twitter sample, those who are tagged show up in green, and on the Facebook example on the right, those who are tagged show up in blue. The reason for different colors because tagging also makes it a clickable link to the other person's page. Tagging will allow your post to not only show on your feed, but to also show on the feed of the company or other person you tagged, and the clickable link makes it easy to reach and research those who are commenting in your post, creating a better following. Tag directly drive people to find out more about you, which is why it's important to keep vital profile information about your center up to date on your site, including that URL, to ensure you are giving the most up to date information to any reader. If you have questions about how to use the at symbol to tag, please leave a message in the chat box on the right and we'll be sure to address it with you. Hashtag in front of any word or series of words. Words, make that set searchable and groups like contents together for the purpose of e-searching. You can use Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter as well as Google to search for a specific word or series of words to see who's talking about it or to find your previous posts and repost or comment. To this, just type hashtag and the word or series of words into the search box on each specific site and a listing of related content will be provided. An easy to follow example would be to search for hashtag Duke to see who's talking about them winning the NCAA championship. On the other side, you can search for hashtag Wisconsin to join in with those who are discussing their loss. A workforce related example would be hashtag WIOA. To begin the conversation about the upcoming WIOA implementation will help get your center known and possibly answer some of your questions about the new policy from others who are implementing it. Here you can see the results from the search for WIOA on LinkedIn and Twitter. I found these sites on Google and then clicked on them to be directed to LinkedIn and Twitter to view the discussion. Following, you can post, tweet, or tweet an interesting article and then repost to see the type of feedback that is received. When the repost, you can help spread out your following by saying something like, in case you missed it before a repost. Be sure to spread the release of this post out. Post for a broader range of readers is good, but posting on Monday and then the same information on Tuesday would be overkill. That a business should not post more than four times per day on any singular social media site. If you're just starting out on that social media site, it's recommended not to post more than two posts per week until you gain a following. That way you are not overwhelming followers with content, but still getting your name out there. Overloading followers with too much content could turn them off and drive them away from your page or cause them to unfollow you. We all have had that friend on Facebook that tells us everything they're doing every second of the day, and we all know how annoying it is to open your feed and see 50 posts from the same person, trying to post from others that we may be more interested in way down to the bottom of your feed. What you end up doing with that person? You either hide their posts or unfollow them. The same happen from your workforce center, so be mindful of what you are putting and how relevant it is to your followers. Make them want to read your posts or tweets by choosing what you are sharing wisely and drawing them in. Here are some other quick tips that were given to us. Zero to 70 characters gets 90% more engagement, so keep your tweets short and sweet. To tell someone in the beginning of a tweet, but have that tweet no. tweet, you don't need the period before the hashtag because it will automatically go to all followers. Post images tend to engagement on all of the sites, so be sure to follow regulations for adding images to your posts or tweets. As Jeff mentioned, we're going to try to help out with this by putting some tweet-ready um, images up on the website as well. Easily add your workforce center into each post or tweet by simply adding your URL or Twitter handle at the end. There is no need to put in wording like for more information because it is implied. This again will drive readers back to your site for further details regarding your post or to find out about. 
LinkedIn can be used to build contacts and search for local talent on top of getting relevant information to your followers. So the site can fill many of your workforce center's needs. Flyers down to their Twitter specific sizes to make your followers aware of your events. Use Twitter to find out who is talking about a specific topic. This quick and easy is a quick easy filter and will allow you to share relevant content and add value to meaningful topics already being talked about on your social media site. Remember that the more you use social media, the more you're searchable on Google, so get posting and get recognized. Lishka has offered to assist those with questions about their social media efforts. She will not be able to set up pages for you, but can make suggestions about issues you may be having or give pointers on making your brand well known. He's very knowledgeable. Any time, and if we answer the question, we'll be sure to seek answers from our marketing team to give relevant answers. Questions about the presentation or anything related to the JDNE GIT program. This presentation, as well as the downloadable content, will be available on the JDNEG section of the Illinois WorkNet website in a few days. But we really want to know how you guys are doing with your IT, JDNEG IT grant, and if there's anything that we can help you out with. We really hope that posting these marketing flyers and giving this social media content helps with reaching out to those um, customers that are, are now coming into the center right now. For just a second, does anybody have any questions? All right. Anyways, as I mentioned, this webinar and previously recorded webinars are posted on the JDNEG website. We'll be hosting another webinar on Wednesday, April 29th, to discuss the content we've been adding to the JDNEG website. I said I listed the Illinois WorkNet website wrong. It is www.illinoisworknet.com forward slash job driven NEG. I apologize for my son in the background right now. Um, this kind of is geared towards those workforce, the content we put on the website is geared towards those workforce force professionals providing services to assist job seekers into IT professions. We need to update the website with more information and would love to hear your feedback if you don't like something posted or would like to see more content on a certain aspect of IT workforce development. Also, for those of you who will be participating in our Burning Glass face-to-face -face presentation taking place on April 22nd, we look forward to learning the Burning Glass tools with you. If you're wondering if your center is participating, please comment in the chat box or send us a direct email. We're still waiting for a few attendees to register, so if you or your managers have received an email from us and haven't spoken to us about this, please contact us ASAP. We need to get that set up so we're all prepared for the 22nd. Participating in our webinar today. And here's the contact information for Jeff and myself. We welcome any reach out for anything they may have uh, questions on or issues with that we can help out. Again, the purpose of us is to we are out there lending a hand. We've got the time to research and talk with DCO. We've got a good partnership. So we want to be sure that we're providing everything that we can for you, allowing you more time to work with your customers one on one. So please um, feel free to contact us at any time. I want to thank you again for attending, and if there's any questions, please let us know. I want to add in for just a second here. Um, I had a message that was saying that I was cutting out a little bit during my part, and well, I heard you cutting out a little bit during yours. So we're going to re-record the webinar before we put it up on the DNEG website, just in case there was any information that you guys lost in there because it was cutting in and out. We're all fine here for a little bit in case you do have any questions, so please feel free to ask anything. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you either on the 22nd or at our next webinar, which will be hosted on the 29th. Thank you again for attending.